Hello and welcome to another video where we're going to go over another Suicide Boys beat and today is King Tulip and uh, this is my project for how I think it was made. Um, another really simple beat. We have uh, a sample, some drums and bass and that's it. No vocals obviously. I'm not going to try rap over the top of that. Uh, right, let's play this. Let's uh, let's play the project. Yeah, I really like this one. Uh, the original name of the sample is, uh, well, it's that. If one of you want to try and pronounce that, I don't want to butcher it. Nice sample, though. It's really got a sense of unease to the uh, to the sound this sample, doesn't it? Um, I doubt that whenever this was made, uh, yeah, in the 80s, that they wanted to make it sound so eerie and unsure but it really does go well with this genre it's just pitched down one semitone a tiny bit of bit crushing and it's been chopped a key part of the sample is to get the very start of this part here yeah I don't remember the name for that type of note. In drums, I guess you could call it a ghost note, but there there is a there is an actual musical term for it. <clears throat> Slips my mind though. We process that with a bit of OTT. Actually, loads of OTT. Mm. Yeah, OTT is great for bringing out uh, details that you might not notice if you've got the depth or the the, the mix knob turned all the way up. Listen to how crispy it sounds at the top. It's like that's how the sample is meant to sound. And then we did a little bit of EQ, a bit of a boost down there, and a bit of a cut there. <coughs> Drums. Typically, when you're making drums, you don't want the kick drum to have reverb on it. I'm not saying you shouldn't ever, but in this case, and most other cases, you don't want reverb on the kick drum. That's why I've processed it, uh, I've processed it separately. Unless you're hearing it in isolation, uh, low frequencies with reverb on them don't tend to sound very good in mixes. Uh, that is something I was taught at university that <laughs> I actually remembered. So that's why I keep it separate. See? Low frequency. Bit of clipping, bit of saturation, and then we put on good old Valhalla Supermassive. You know, I do buy a lot of plugins, but one type of plugin I've actually never spent money on is a, is a reverb plugin. If you know any good reverb plugins that are worth the money, then let me know uh, and I'll check it out. This is just so good though, because it does delay and reverb. Look at all these controls, it's great. Also, the built-in reverb for a reason is just really good as well. <coughs> Yeah, and then I just brought the drums together with another clip. I was feeling it was lacking a bit of cohesion. Maybe your ears aren't quite trained enough to hear it, but the, the clipping does add a little bit of crispiness onto the, the, the high frequencies. Most notable in the kick. And then I'll turn it on. 
Yeah. Maybe I'm overthinking it. 808. Yeah, you want a big fat 808 for this one. Um, that's the original sample. It's from the that lunch guy <laughs> that's on Reddit, Lunch77. Uh, he, he released some nice little sample packs for free. That's where I got this sample from. And then I processed it with a shaper box. If you don't have shaper box, go and buy it right now because it's... Uh, it's great. It does tons of stuff. I'm not really going to go into it just now, but it's great. This is the basic version of Shaperbox as well. I oh, can wait. No, it's not. My bad. This is the more advanced version. Go buy Shaperbox. Adds a nice bit of distortion with that unit. Bit of a boost in the mids and compression at the end. Looks like I was going to limit this bass for some reason. Yeah, it just sounds better without it, might as well delete that. And then when you put it all together, yeah, the bass is really uh, keeping this beat together. I think if the bass was more sparse like it is in a lot of other tunes, it wouldn't work the same. This bass needed to be uh, fat and crunchy and just be consistent. Yeah. Um, here's a pro tip. When you're making drum beats, um, if you're questioning whether it's a good drum beat or not, a good rule of thumb is, can you physically play it on a drum kit because that's what our ears are used to hearing is people playing real drums or representations of drums and just because these aren't standard drum sounds on a drum kit doesn't mean I couldn't play this pattern on a real drum kit perhaps with the exception of the hi-hats that's how I like to think about it um, yeah, so let me know what you think. If you have any questions, I'll answer them for you. And we'll see you in the next video.